Hello, and welcome to the fall semester of 2021. I'm sure we are all equally excited to get this school year started and see what it holds for us. Uh, you are in an exclusively online class, so I wanted to make this video and just kind of give you a little bit of feedback about the class, I'll tell you a little bit about myself, and hopefully we can learn a little bit about uh, each and every one of you as well. What I'm going to do is Although I'm going to make a video here uh, telling you a little about myself, I'd like you to make a forum post. I'll put a forum in, in the first week uh, for introductions. Let me get to know each of you. Either make a video or uh, an audio recording that you can upload, or you can uh, just write it out. But I, I like having each of you uh, know your classmates, even though you're, you're distance learning and not necessarily sitting in a classroom. I think it's important to get to know your classmates uh, so you know uh, who has uh, strengths that you may need to lean on and who is out there that, uh, that may need your help. So getting that introduction out of the way is the first step to uh, getting a, a, a better knowledge for all of your classmates. And of course, myself, I'll, I'll start off by telling you that I, that you may recognize me. I recognize some of the names on, on the rosters that I've seen. I've been teaching at Johnston Community College for a couple semesters now, but before this, it was only online. Uh, this is my first semester actually being on campus teaching seated classes and online classes in a full-time capacity. So I'm excited to uh, to start a new chapter in my life. I just uh, was able to make this transition because I retired from the Los Angeles Police Department just a, just a couple months ago over the summer after 22 years with the LAPD, uh, now making a transition to North Carolina and teaching here at JCC. It's, a, it's an exciting opportunity. Uh, I get to continue with some of the online students and then introduce myself and get to know a whole new population of seated students. So I'm excited for that. As far as educational experience, I also started out in a community college. In fact, I think you can see the, the pennant. I started out there at Highland Community College uh, many years ago. I went there for two years before joining the military. And I joined the Air Force and I was a, a police officer in the Air Force for four years. Uh, then joining the LAPD, realizing that I needed to continue my education. So I was an adult learner. There's a lot of adult learners here at JCC that aren't necessarily uh, 17, 18 years old uh, coming right out of high school. And I, I know exactly how it feels to have to either have a family or have a full-time job and go to school. So I encourage you to, to stay strong and continue in your educational journey. I started out uh, when, I, when I went back to school and ended up finishing my bachelor degree in criminal justice. I got a, I continued from there and, and got a master degree. I think you can see that as well, right, right there. A master degree in, in criminal justice and public administration. And currently still in school, uh, I'm a doctoral candidate, hoping to finish my PhD this semester, actually. I'm, I'm working towards Hopefully it's been a long journey and I'm hoping that in the next few months I will be able to conclude that journey and I'll graduate with a PhD. So that, that's uh, a little bit of my educational excitement, my goals, what's, uh, what I've got on the horizon. And if there's anything in that work experience or the, the educational journey that I've taken from community college to being an adult learner to uh, graduate school to a PhD program and completing it, hopefully soon completing a, a, a doctorate degree, uh, please let me know. I, I love to, to chat with folks and, and share my experiences and, and answer all the questions that I can. Uh, transitioning a little bit from there to uh, what I expect, my expectations in the, in the classroom, whether it be online or, or the CD classroom, most of my classes are heavy in writing. This is a criminal justice program. Uh, most jobs in criminal justice career fields necessitate a lot of writing. So police officers make a lot of reports. Those who work in, in the courts, those who work in corrections, victims, advocates, there's just writing, writing, writing. And to do that, to get each of you prepared for that, then I assign a lot of writing so that you can get proficient or maintain your proficiencies in writing. Uh, each agency that you work for, each job that you work for is going to have its own rules. You're going to have to write reports a certain way. Uh, and because of that, I expect a certain uh, specific style of writing. And the, the writing that I expect, follows the APA 7 format. If you're not familiar with that, I'm going to post a link that describes it. Uh, I have a couple of videos that I can share with you. 
I encourage you to get the APA textbook, or you can go far cheaper. You can go to the Purdue OWL website, OWL, the online writing lab, and look up APA 7. There are a lot of rules when it comes to APA 7, and that's why I choose that style, because I want you to have a very specific style of rules that you have to follow uh, when you're writing so that we can maintain that awareness of what it's like to follow somebody else's guidelines. Uh, for instance, every APA 7 paper has to have a title page, standalone title page. You'll see that on the OWL website and some of the, the, the references, the resources that I post. Don't just start out with, with your narrative. You have to have a title page. And there's very specific rules about having a running head on the title page and where you put your name and where you put my name and where you put the class and the title of the paper, things like that. Every page is specifically numbered in a certain location. And then um, most importantly, every paper that I assign has a certain number of required references. References are the, the sources to which you're referring when you make a statement. So if you're going to say, for instance, I, I've used this example in the past, if you're going to say the sky is blue, you don't have to cite a reference for that because everybody knows the sky is blue. However, if you're going to say the crime rate in Johnston County is higher or lower than the crime rate in Wake County. Well, not everybody knows that. So where did you learn that? Where did you find that out? You have to say where you, where you learned that, where, what reference you're using, and you need to cite that reference. So there are two parts to a citation. One is the reference page, which is the very last page of any paper in APA format. The reference page has to alphabetically list all your references alphabetically by the last name of the author of that reference. And second of all, every reference that's on that page needs to have an in-text citation, which is in parenthesis after you said it. So if you said Johnston County has a higher crime rate than Wake County, right after you said that in parenthesis, you put the name of the author who said it and the year they said it. Whatever the textbook is or the article or the website, Wherever you found that, you need to cite that. And it comes in a very, very specific format that you'll see uh, on the OWL website or any APA reference page that you use and any of the, the documents that I post on the welcome page of Blackboard. So I give you all the resources. I give you all the, the ways to learn APA format. And so I hold you to that standard. I've given you everything you need to know to follow that format. So if you don't follow that format, then you will lose points. I don't take away enough points based solely on formatting errors for somebody to fail because I believe more in content than formatting, but I still believe that formatting is important and you need to learn it. And it will uh, eventually progressively uh, take away more and more points. If, you, if I give you feedback and say, hey, you're, you're not following the format and then you use the same thing. And then I say, hey, you're not following the format and then you use the same way and you don't follow the advice that I'm giving you, the feedback that I'm giving you, you're going to lose more and more points each week with each subsequent paper. Uh, so I encourage you to follow the feedback that I put in your papers and, and take it to heart. Uh, for instance, one of the things that I've seen in the past on, on several occasions is on the reference page, instead of using the formatting that the APA 7 requires, if somebody finds a reference in a website, they just cut and paste the link to the website. That doesn't follow the, the format you have to use a specific style. So I encourage you to read the sources that I give you, give you take those, uh, use them, learn them. And it, not only will it make you uh, a better researcher, it's gonna prepare you for the next level uh, at a four year university or eventually at graduate school. I'm still using APA format literally to this day, this morning, as I was writing my dissertation, my PhD dissertation, I was using APA format and citing sources. Get using in-text citations and adding to my reference reference list, which is uh, upwards of, in this case, because the dissertation is, is well over 100 pages, my, I don't have just one page of references. I, I have uh, close to a dozen pages of, of references. So I, I encourage you to learn the style and approach me if you have any questions, and I will give you the feedback uh, that's necessary to bring you to where you need to be. Uh, that brings me to my next point. When it comes to references, they need to be quality references. Uh, for instance, Wikipedia, not a quality reference, not an academic reference. Anytime you use Wikipedia in this class, it will not count. It has to be an academic source. 
I, preferably peer reviewed and you find it in the library. If you go to the, the JCC library webpage, you can find uh, thousands of sources to back up what you're trying to say. Uh, but if you are using a website, then use that website. Uh, whatever it is that you used to, to relay to you the information that you're using in your paper, then that needs to be referenced. You can't, you can't let somebody else say something, take their words and make them yours. That's plagiarism. Uh, plagiarism is, is a very, very big deal in the academic world. I take it very seriously. JCC takes it very seriously. If you read the student handbook, you'll see it's addressed in the code of conduct. Uh, I will not stand for plagiarism, whether it be uh, failing to cite somebody else's words, cutting and pasting somebody else's words, or just copying an entire paper. If you choose to take somebody else's words and not give them credit, it will have dire, dire consequences on your scores and your grades. So I encourage you, don't, don't copy somebody else's work. Don't copy something out of the textbook without giving the textbook uh, proper uh, reference and proper credit. I'm going to make videos almost every week where I give you a, a lecture about the content of the class. You can use the information that I give you in that lecture, but just make sure you cite that in a proper way. If you look up, again, if you look up that OWL website, the Online Writing Lab website, it tells you exactly how to reference a YouTube video, which is what I upload. I upload YouTube videos and it tells you exactly, it will be uh, my name and, and the date that I uploaded it, things like that. So just, um, just give the credit where the credit is due. And if, you, if it's a, an original thought on your part, then you don't need to reference it. But if you're using somebody else's thoughts to, uh, to support your thoughts, you absolutely need to reference it. Otherwise, there will be uh, some consequences when it comes to grading because that's, that's the definition of plagiarism. Um, I've already mentioned the, the library. If you have any questions on how to access the library, please let me know. Uh, there, if you type into the bar of the JCC homepage library, it'll bring you exactly there and it will bring you to journals and articles. You can search by subject, by author, by date. If, you, if we have a paper due on any criminal justice topic, we'll even just use criminal justice as a generic topic, then you can type in criminal justice and it will give you tons of articles about that subject and you can read those articles and have information to bolster your, your product, your written product, uh, just remember. And even better, it gives you a citation. If you find the quotation marks in that little box, it will format your citation into APA format and you can just cut and paste it into your reference page. So it's already formatted for you. So it makes your job, your job a little easier. Uh, discussion board posts. Every week we'll have a discussion board post with the exception of uh, perhaps the midterm or the final, just, just double check. But most likely even on those weeks, uh, there will be a discussion board post required by everyone to complete. Uh, those discussion board posts are due on Wednesday each week. They'll be released on Monday. The very first initial post is due by the end of the day on Wednesday. Those have to be 300 words of mostly original content, but you need to cite the sources, either paraphrase somebody else's uh, thoughts to bolster your thoughts and give them credit. Uh, but I don't want you using... 100% of your posts to be somebody else's words that you're crediting them for. I want to, I want your life experiences. I want to know how uh, the topic that we're discussing is, has affected you or what you've learned about that topic uh, in your life, because that's how other folks learn. We're having a discussion. That's what a discussion board is. So talk about the subject, talk about how it fits into your life and your experiences. But every discussion board post has to have a minimum of two outside references. It can be either the, the video that I post or the textbook. Uh, or what you find in the library, but make sure you have uh, at least those two. Uh, the replies, you must have two replies to your classmates, and those are due on Sunday. Uh, the initial post has a minimum length of 300 words, and each reply has a minimum length of 150 words. So make sure you maintain the minimum word count so you don't lose any points there. The rubric will be posted online, so if you have uh, any questions about uh, how I'm grading is plain as day right there in the rubric. You'll be able to see it. There's no secrets to how to how to get a good grade in each and every one of these assignments. The uh, the writing rubric and the discussion board rubric are both there, and you can see exactly what I'm using to grade your papers. Uh, I'm always available uh, via email if you want to send me a uh, a message. 
my email contact information is in the, uh, the instructor portion of Blackboard. Please use it, send me a message. I try to answer every email by uh, within 24 hours. I have office hours that are posted on the website as well and the syllabus. So if you want to call or even stop by the office, uh, even though you're an online student, you're more than welcome to stop by the office and introduce yourself and ask any questions that you have during those office hours. Uh, but if you want to call, you can also also call then. Uh, the phone number is listed and the phone and the emails usually, uh, or excuse me, the, the voicemails will usually be forwarded to my email. So I get them even if I'm not in the office. Uh, that's about all I had to say today. If you have any questions, please, please reach out. I am, I'm available. Uh, the whole reason that most of us got into this, this job of teaching is because we wanted to have interaction and we wanted to be able to help folks come from, from where they are to where they can be. And that, that's, that's all I want from each of you. And not only am I going to help you, uh, I'm gonna do my best to help you learn the material. I know that you're gonna help me learn. Uh, I don't go through a class. I've never gone through a class uh, where I taught that I didn't learn something. So don't think that there's something that I can't learn. If you see there's a, an error on a test, an error on a, on, in the textbook, you wanna discuss that, or you feel that, that I said something in error, let's have a talk about it. You know, the, nobody's perfect. Just because I stand at the front of the classroom, or in this case, uh, I make videos, I am no means perfect. I've been, I, I'm, I learn every day, and I, and I hope to continue learning. So bring it to my attention. Uh, until then, I look forward to meeting you through your introductions, and I will also look forward to reading your first discussion board posts, which are due this Wednesday. I'll talk to you soon.